I have over 30 years of broadcasting uh, experience, a broadcast veteran, uh, mostly in radio, but uh, also on some television stuff as well. And more and more, the two worlds are always blending together. And since we are now doing virtual everything more and more, we have to figure out how to communicate like broadcasters, like journalists, because we are doing short video clips on YouTube, we're doing podcasts, we're doing webinars, you're doing interview shows. Even if you're in the corporate world right now, you are interviewing people for jobs. You're interviewing people to explain new systems and strategies, and you're letting people sit into a room and watch those all the time now. So more and more, we're becoming broadcasters, and more and more, this virtual stage is becoming a vital part of our work effort, of our lives, you cannot escape it. And as we say almost every week here on the virtual stage, the virtual stage is not going away. There's so much that has changed, but broadcasting is at the heart of it. And before we even get deep into some of the practical tips of the broadcasting, the journalism that's gonna help you to really rock this, I wanna share this little tidbit for you. It's really important to understand as broadcasters, as communicators, we've been given a sacred trust. People expect when we step up the microphone, when we're getting on the camera, we are gonna give them the best we have. It's gonna be fair and true and accurate. As a journalist, that's what I was taught going on, that you have to always know what you say matters. What you present, people will take as factual and real and important to their lives. So we have a sacred trust. We have to hold that carefully in the palm of our hands and let people know that what you're doing as a journalist, even if it's a podcast, even if it's a talk show, whatever it is you're presenting now, you are in the journalism world. So first of all, I wanna talk about some interview skills because I do a lot of interviews, sports broadcasting, you interview the coach, the players, uh, the hero of the game. It's always fun to do those. So here's a couple setups because podcasters, you are now the interviewers. You are the new, Jay Leno, you are the new the Conan O'Brien, and some of you like doing the comedy stuff, and some of you are trying to do the real serious material. I, I know people are talking about comic books, they're talking about politics, they're talking about sex on these webinars and podcasts, but you're still interviewing people, and there's a certain expectation that comes with interviewing, and the number one thing is you need to set up your guests to shine. First and foremost, you are there to let them shine and help them. So often, as I'm setting up for webinars and interview shows myself, I'll send out three questions. I'll ask them for what are some five key questions they want to have answered. Now, I'll frame it up in my own way of saying it so it's part of the conversation. But you want them to shine and bring the best to the stage that they can bring. So it's part of that sacred trust I was talking about that you need to set your guest up to shine. That doesn't mean you don't ask hard questions, but you at least ask in advance. I've interviewed people that I know about death in the family that occurred pretty close to the game that I was covering. As a common courtesy, I would ask, is that an okay subject to touch on, to ask about, or is that something that we should not touch on right now? It's part of the story, but there's also the proper way. You can just do it as a sidestep, as a side note, and mention that. But you don't have to ask the question. You don't have to go for the deep dive and say, hey, how do you feel about the loss of your family member? How does that affect your gameplay tonight? There are times for that and there's times not. And that's part of the, curtis, uh, the courtesy that you need to extend your guests to let them shine in the moment. Now, journalism 101, really important right now. I am so frustrated with my fellow journalists and broadcasters right now. What, what broadcasting has become. Broadcasting is not the who, what, where, when, how, and why. And I was taught as a broadcaster that many of us grew up watching and hearing that we've been led to it to believe broadcasting now has become commentary. You get a story, an event, and instead of giving the facts and just the facts, as it was said many, many times on TV and in our broadcasting classes, we have now decided to read the headline and then go into our opinion, our own thoughts. Journalists, 
interview people, podcasters. Let me tell you, the best way to get credibility in this industry, the best way to really, really shine, who, what, where, when, and how, and why. Go back to those over and over again. In the middle of the interview, as they're answering, answering the question, what's the next logical question? Well, why did you do that? What happened next? You can also use those as pre-setup questions as well. You can ask them in your pre-interview, a who, a what, a where, a when, a how, and a why, and that will help you to frame up the rest of the conversation. It also shows respect. Again, that's sacred trust. So learn to do this in your podcast. Learn to ask the questions in your webinars, in your live interview sessions. When you're doing a live feed with somebody, ask the journalist questions that make up every great story, and you will shine better as a communicator and speaker. Next thing is ask shorter questions. <laughs> shorter questions are really important. I have seen <laughs> reporters, well known reporters, on camera, live on TV, ramble on and on and on. And they do the history of the event, they, they, they do this angle and that angle. They have this long monologue, and then they get done, and the guest is like, is there a question in there someplace, please? The best way to do this is to make them short. Keep them focused and you give them more time to answer. You're taking away of content time from the very people you want to speak as your experts. You want them to come onto your shows and share the content and you want them to actually fill the space with good stuff. Now, also if you do shorter questions, you can follow up with another one. You need to be a better listener than you are a speaker on your show. Let me say that again. As a host, as a podcaster, as a broadcaster, as an interviewer, you need to be a better listener than you are a speaker. Because you want to go where the story goes. That's the next point. You want to go where the story goes. Now, you may have all some questions pre-done pre up. You may think you know where the narrative is going to go. But one of the things that I love doing is following the story in front of me. You will be surprised what happens in a good interview. I was doing an interview recently, and we were going through uh, some speaking steps of, about the virtual stage and what we do and how we coach people up. And, and then we got to it later on. They're like, so... What are some of the biggest challenges for you in doing this? So that, was, that was their question to me. And I said, one of the biggest challenges is I stutter. And they had their mouth drop in the interview. <laughs> They're like, wait, 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 what do you mean you stutter? And it became the second part of the story, another story within the story. And then I could talk about the coaching of speech and confidence and other things because of my stutter and why I deliver the way I deliver. And that opened up a whole second realm of conversation. See, if you just stay with your notes and if you don't follow the story, you will miss good quality stuff. Podcasters, speakers, roll your tape and capture it all. You can always do a part two. You can always say, you know what, let's have you come back and talk about that again which has happened on some of my interviews, because they've gotten done. They said, we need to hear more about that other thing that we just touched a little bit on. You need to catch those moments, and you need to grab those moments and really embrace them. One more final one before we wrap up for today. Edit, edit, edit. We live in a small soundbite world now. Everything that you tape, and tape everything, by the way, tape everything you do and repurpose it. But you can take a long show into a mini show. You can do highlight promotional pieces based off the actual show. You can do other things 
you edit and edit. Or if there's awkward audio, get it out of there. If there was something that dropped in and just was a fumbled bad thing, or if there was one of those long, awkward pauses that I mentioned earlier, when you ask that question that really wasn't a question, and you know it just came out horrible, drop the answer. Drop the question. Edit it and make it tighter. People's attention spans are not long. We talked about this on the virtual stage. And again, if you want more information on how to do these things, contact me on this. But one of the things you want to do is leave them hungry for more. Don't give them everything, but take them to a point, dangle the carrot and say, if you want to know more, boom. Edit your content so you have good content, but leave them hungry to find out more information, to follow up with your guests. Always make sure you have your guest liner notes, contact information, their websites, their emails, whatever information they want. Make sure you always have it in your liner notes of your show in the description on your YouTube channels and make sure they know how to funnel it through them. You are not in competition with your guests. You want to make them shine and be the best they can. So edit and make it look and sound really, really good. Those are some practical tips on how to rock the virtual stage. As a broadcaster, as a journalist, you have to realize that you have all now become journalists. You've all become broadcasters. By flipping on the camera, by turning on your podcast, you are now in the media's eye. Now, some of us want to really do that. Some of us are just wanting to have a little bit of fun. I think we all want to do a good job to get our content on. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. I think we all want to find a way to make an impact or we wouldn't be doing it. Realize the minute you turn on that camera, you are automatically in a sacred trust where people are expecting something of quality and true. Go back to the basics of broadcasting with me. Go back to the good stuff that really makes it solid and People will eat it up and want to hear more about it. Go back to the who's, the what's, the where, the when, the how's, and the why. Learn about journalism. Learn about broadcasting. And every one of your podcasts, every one of your webinars, every one of your live events will be much better than the last one. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, I would love to hear from you. Rich at richbontrager.net. You can also find my website, richbontrager.net. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Social media is my platform. Easily find me and also ask for a 30-minute free consultation on how to rock the virtual stage for whatever industry you're in. Whether you're a teacher, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a business executive, or whether you're a broadcaster speaker, I'm here to help you learn how to rock the stage better and better. Hey, until next time, it's the Trigger, Rich Bontrager.